Hi folks! Um, this is going to be a short video lecture um, that's going to walk through the next topic in our textbook. Um, on the off chance that my flight gets delayed on Tuesday with all the snow, since I'll be flying back right before our class, um, this is a video lecture to make sure that we stay up to date. So I will see you guys soon. In At the start of chapter 4 in our text, they introduce a really um, interesting new system we haven't looked at before that seems to combine two of the features that we've really been looking for. Um, today's topic overall is going to be on something called independence of irrelevant alternatives, which is a criterion we haven't considered before that we might want to see in an election. So as a warm-up, this new system that we're going to use to try to decide on winners of an election was something proposed by Duncan Black in the 50s. Um, so Duncan Black was an economist, and his idea was to um, to start with, um, again, everybody's going to give their preference order and we'll collect the full set of preference, uh, you know, preference orders of all voters into a preference schedule. Um, based on these preference orders, we're going to first look through and see if there is a Condorcet winner. And as a reminder, a Condorcet winner is a winner so that in overall, if we restrict the election to only pairs of candidates, um, a Condorcet winner is a candidate that would win in a head-to-head -head contest between every other candidate in the election and the winner. Um, if there isn't a Condorcet winner, and we've seen several examples of elections in class where there weren't, um, the board account, which we've talked about several times, is then a follow-up to determine who wins if there's not a Condorcet winner. So this sounds like it might be a really good system. Um, so let's look through five of the major criteria that we've looked at before and decide which of these black system satisfies and which of any does this does black system fail. So these five criterion, remember that anonymity is the idea that if any pair of candidates swap ballots, it shouldn't change the outcome. Uh, neutrality says that if any two candidates are swapped in order on every person's ballot, the outcome their positions in the final societal preference order should swap. Um, monotonicity says that if a voter ranks a candidate higher in their preference ranking, this shouldn't have an adverse effect on the candidate's ranking in the societal preference order. Um, the majority criterion states that if a candidate wins more than 50% of the first place votes, they should win the election. And the Condorcet winning condition says that um, a, if there is a Condorcet winner, they should win the election. So as a reminder, black system essentially goes through and chooses, if it exists, the Condorcet winner from our candidates. And if no Condorcet winner exists, we then like do a backup and do a board account on everyone's preference orders. So by definition, because if a Condorcet winner exists, we select it, we satisfy the Condorcet winning condition. Similarly, because we're only doing this based on head-to-head -head contests for it to determine Condorcet winners, or the board account, which we know satisfies anonymity, um, this system has to satisfy anonymity. Um, similarly, if, if two candidates are swapped on ballots and one was a Condorcet winner and the other wasn't, swapping their positions on every voter's ballot would swap the non-Condorcet winner to the Condorcet winner, and in the board account, swapping two candidates' positions on every ballot would exactly swap their border point count. Uh, this system is going to satisfy the majority criterion. Um, one, because if a, if a candidate wins a majority of votes, um, they will have to be declared the Condorcet winner. So we don't have to worry about the fact that the board account doesn't satisfy the majority criterion because it will satisfy the Condorcet winning criterion and force a, a win. Um, similarly, the hardest one probably for us to show directly is monotonicity, but because both um, the Condorcet winning criteria condition and the um, and the board account will satisfy monotonicity, this system has to satisfy being monotone as well. So this really, so far, it sounds like a great system that satisfies five of the big properties we've been looking at, and so let's actually test this out on a possible system um, that we're going to decide using Black's, Black's um, you know, voting system. So 
This is an example used in our text. So this is there's a world sexiest man contest between three candidates or three finalists. So I've changed this slightly in that we're going to have this contest between uh, Delay, Paul, and Wayne. Bit of a stretch there. Um, so uh, let's say that our 15 judges rank the three finalists as shown in the following preference schedule. So this is actually example 4.6 um, from the Hodge text. Um, so under Black's system, um, who will win this election? So to start with, we need to check whether or not there is a Condorcet winner. So we're going to pairwise compare each of our finalists based on votes. And our first pair, let's look at Paul and Delay. So Paul um, wins by nine votes uh, to delay six votes. So um, Paul wins in both the first column and in the second in the third column. Delay wins in the second column. Uh, delay winds up beating Wayne 13 to 2. If you look at the, the preference orders, you see that Delay wins um, in both the first and the second columns, and Wayne wins in the third. And Wayne winds up beating Paul. So um, Wayne wins in the last two columns. So looking at this, we see there actually is no Condorcet winner, so we're going to have to move on to use a board account. So for our board account, um, we see that Paul um, takes seven first place votes from the first column and two second place votes from the third column, giving him a total of 16 points. Uh, Dulay takes six first place votes and seven second place votes with a total of 19 points. And Wayne only takes two first place votes and six second place votes, putting him in at 10. So uh, under the board account, Delay wins the election, and our overall societal preference order is Delay beats Paul beats Wayne. Okay, um, so far that system seemed just fine, but let's see what happens if, for example, Wayne is kicked out of the contest for some sort of disorderly conduct. I don't know what type of disorderly conduct like to imagine this. So um, who would be the new winner of our contest? Um, looking back at our rankings, we can see that without Wayne, Paul wins um, nine of the, the 15 votes. So Paul winds up beating Delay in just this head-to-head -head election, which we actually saw in our when we were calculating our Condorcet winner, or lack of a Condorcet winner. Um, the weird problem with this, though, is when Wayne was running, Delay won the overall election, followed by Paul, followed by Wayne. So Wayne, even though he was a third-place candidate, wound up swapping the order of who won in our final election. This would seem even sketchier, let's say, if, um, if we find out later that maybe Wayne and Delay are best friends and Wayne was really only running to try to muck up Paul's chances. But in general, the idea that a third candidate being knocked out will somehow change the societal preference order between two completely different candidates seems a little troubling. Um, and so this, this weakness in black system is actually, um, it's a general problem that we'd like to, to try to find voting systems that, that don't have this sort of nasty property. Um, we actually have seen other systems where the idea of some candidate mucking up the election for the other two. Um, things like plurality, we've seen a, an example already where these spoiler candidates um, like change the potential, potentially change the outcome of an election. And so this property that um, we like voting systems to satisfy that we haven't considered before is called the independence of irrelevant alternatives criterion. So specifically a voting system where um, the societal preference order between any two candidates doesn't depend on whether or not a third candidate runs or how highly they're ranked, um, we'll often shorten this criterion to IIA. And we've already seen that black system fails IIA even though it seemed to satisfy those five other, it, no, it did satisfy those five other very nice properties. In general, a lot of the systems that we've looked at, unfortunately, may not satisfy the system. So I'd like you guys to work on your own, and there are nice examples in the book to help you through this. See whether or not the board account 
satisfies this independence of irrelevant alternatives criterion. Um, see if plurality satisfies it. And a good way to prove that one of these systems does, does not satisfy it is if you can come up with an election or cite a historical election where IIA probably was violated. And there's a nice walkthrough in those four questions in our text, or five questions in our text, where you can check which of the voting systems we've looked at so far have satisfied it. So this will all also go through um, sequential pairwise voting um, and a, a few other systems. Um, more troublingly, some of the systems that do satisfy the seemingly nice criterion are actually some of the systems that we classified as bad. So for one, dictatorships satisfy this IIA criterion, as do imposed rule. So having a declared winner, either by a single voter or by the system itself, um, both of these, adding or removing an irrelevant candidate, won't change the outcome. Um, a system that we wouldn't expect to satisfy it, but interestingly enough does, is the minority rule, where adding or removing an irrelevant candidate won't change the preference order between two other candidates. So this is, um, again, this is one new property for us to consider. Um, we're going to come back on Thursday and cover um, a theorem called Arrow's Impossibility Theorem, where we'll talk about, um, given five, four or five, depending on how you look at it, key criterion that we'd like voting systems to satisfy, Arrow's Impossibility Theorem will actually prove that no voting system with more than two candidates exists that satisfies all of these desirable properties simultaneously. So I'll see you guys soon, and take care.